Here we have a simple GraphQL server using Express.js with the Express GraphQL plugin. We have a simple schema and we have some dummy data in an array and we have some resolvers which map to those dummy data entries. If we load localhost 4000 and head on over to the graphical interface, we can make a few queries here. One query is to fetch all of the users and we can get the name, email, role, and the ID. We can also create users and pass an input here. For demonstration purposes, this just returns anything we input as well as a new ID. In this video, we'll be looking at GraphQL Shield. GraphQL Shield is a middleware library that plugs into our GraphQL API, and it's designed to allow us to specify rules which will either permit or deny access from the outside world. To get started, open your terminal inside of your project and install the GraphQL middleware package and GraphQL Shield itself. Since GraphQL Shield is a GraphQL middleware library, we need to apply middleware to our schema and pass in that GraphQL Shield object. Let's first import and require the apply middleware from GraphQL middleware, and then we'll import shield from the GraphQL shield package. Let's go ahead and first declare the permissions. We'll need to invoke shield and pass to the constructor an object that will map to our query mutations and our root types. Then we'll declare schema with permissions and we'll pass to apply middleware the schema and the permissions. Then all that's left to do is update our application and then update the GraphQL HTTP package to point to the new schema with permissions instead of just the schema that we made executable. Now if we go ahead and pass to shield an object map into query and mutation and leave these as empty objects for now, if we start the server and head on over to the graphical interface, you'll see that all of the queries are working as we expect. So at this point, the GraphQL middleware and GraphQL shield is working. There is no errors, our application is running and the requests are being returned to us. We just don't have any middleware or any rules defined to allow or deny access to our API. Inside of our permissions map, let's map users to is authenticated. Then we'll go ahead and define the is authenticated rule. Everything that appears to the right of the query is the rule. Then let's go ahead and declare the is authenticated rule. And if we use rule, you'll see here, it's automatically been imported for us in our common JS requirements above. And what we need to pass to the rule function is a asynchronous function that pretty much looks like a regular GraphQL resolver. And inside of here, you have access to everything you would inside of a normal GraphQL resolver, such as the arguments, context, and any of the info about the EST. And for this example, let's just return false. If we head on over to graphical and we run this query, you'll now see that we have not authorized. So this is GraphQL shield working. It is not authorized to permit anything from working. So it will return a GraphQL error. You can also customize the error, which is returned to the user. So we can return a new error and when you run that GraphQL query again, you'll now see that we have a custom message that we defined inside of the rule. But for the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and just return whether or not there is any headers with the user ID defined. So if we go ahead and we run this, you'll see we are not authorized. But if we head to the request headers pane inside of graphical and we pass in user ID and we pass a ID and rerun the query, you'll now see that we are authenticated. This is a cheat, but if you think about a bearer token, we can pass a bearer token and GraphQL shield can inspect that bearer token and make sure that it's valid and there is a user Let's now go ahead and create a, another rule and we'll call this is admin. So similar to how we defined the rule above, we'll go ahead and define the signature for the rule. To check that we're an admin, we are first going to find the, the user where the context user ID matches that inside of our mock user data. So in this case, we'll just loop through all of our users and we'll 
pluck out that user, and if there is a user by that ID and the role equals admin, that will return a Boolean. If we use AND, which will automatically be required for us, we can pass to AND multiple rules that we've already defined. So in this case, we'll pass is authenticated and admin. So in order to run the user's query, that user must be an admin and must be authenticated. If we change the user ID to two, we'll see here that we are authenticated because the mock data with the user ID of two, the role is admin. If we change this to user and we rerun that query, you'll now see that we are not authorized. We'll now continue by updating the shield map to only allow access to the me query if you are authenticated. So if we run a query to fetch me and I want to fetch the ID, you'll see that I'm able to do so. And this is because we've passed that header. We'll now go ahead and define the mutation map and for create user, we'll pass in a new rule that is called is not already registered. And this will use a new type of rule provided by GraphQL Shield. This rule is called the input rule. With a input rule, we can return a yup schema. So if you're not familiar with yup, it is a validation library. And if we pass a object to the input object, we can define inside of here all of the rules. We'll define inside of the input object that the name is a string and required. And the email is also a email string and it's required. But we'll also check that the email is not one of the existing emails that we already have mocked. And if it is, we can return a custom error. If we now run that mutation and we provide a name and a email that already exists, when we execute the mutation, we should see that we have that custom error returned. If we update the mutation to include a unique email, the mutation should be ran successfully. There are other logic rules available to import as well. The next we'll have a look will be or. This create post mutation can be ran if you are either a admin or you are an owner and an editor. You can also import allow, deny, not, and many others. If we deny all access to queries, then every query that we do not have a rule for will be declined. So here the user's query still executes and the query to get me still executes because we have other rules defined. But if we added any additional queries, they will be denied. So we can see here, we've removed the rule for me and this is denied, but the one to users is still allowed. If we change allow to the me query, we'll see that this is also allowed. This also works for mutations as well. We can deny all mutations or we can allow. We haven't covered everything with GraphQL Shield in this video, so I'd recommend you view the documentation and watch a future episode when we cover more of the caching strategies with GraphQL Shield.